Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for the Cuckoo's Fiance, Chapter 106. Uh, when we last left our heroes, Erika and Nagi were hard at work trying to find something they could do for the M1, uh, and they found something. We don't know what it was, uh, but it shocked Sachi to the point that she texted her parents, don't come to the festival. So, of course, they're coming to the festival. Um, as are the Ominos, though they seem much less... Much less... Um, much less happy about it, much less casual about going. Uh, there, there's some shit going on with them. Uh, either way, the morning of the festival, Sachi wakes up and finds Nagi and Erika passed out in the living room from working on the project so hard. Um, and so after that, the two of them go to the festival, they take a picture together, and the festival is set to begin. So with that said, let's dive right on in chapter 106. We have our scan leader page here, which is embarrassingly risque, uh, magazine cover to celebrate the, um, so here's the weird thing, because I thought this, I thought the whole magazine was on break this week, right? It's why I thought Eden Zero was going to come out next week, but also Eden Zero often comes out during the break week and skips the next week. It's why Eternity is off this week. And like, this would make sense if this was coming out a week from now, because the anime is coming out a week from from tomorrow, I think. Or maybe a week from today. I'm not sure. Uh, 423, it says. Which would be a week from tomorrow, but also when you count time changes and everything. So, are we going to be off next week is the question I'm still not sure of. Um, I don't know. Either way, magazine cover uh, of Erika, Sachi, and Hiro. Uh, we have these, like, wedding pictures that got released. Um, I saw an ANN article about it uh, yesterday, I think. We have Erika in a sort of European wedding dress. It's sort of reminiscent of, of the, the fake marriage arc. Hiro in like a traditional Japanese outfit. Sachi in her own wedding dress that I still, you know, my thoughts on Sachi are long since stated. And I in a more Chinese attire. Um, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're very well drawn pictures, you know, uh, as we all know of what, uh, what Yoshikawa is capable of. But either way, the day of the cultural festival, people are coming in to the festival. 106 Fowl, I'm glad I got to hang out with you at school. Which is a little ominous. I'm assuming that's somehow going to be tied into what Erika and Nagi do for the festival. But like looking at people coming in, there's like, you know, people, people in like shrine attire. But there's also this guy dresses the four of clubs. I don't know what the deal is with that. What's going on with this, like, card motif? Uh, and then we see this line. Come on in, master. Welcome to class 2A's Maid Cafe. So I guess that's what the class is doing. Uh, be delicious. Mm -mm -mm. I, I'm not exactly the target audience for a Maid Cafe. So this is sort of a thing. Uh, but we see Erika and Hiro in their Maid outfits. Which of you is next in line to become our master? Me first. Me first, please, Erika-chan. Seigo-san, over here! You two are just so cute. They're, like, the crowd's going wild for them. The waiting time for entry to our, to our shop is one hour. Please take, please take a number, okay? Uh, and then some guys passing by comment, Wow, 2A is really knocking out of the park. Of course they are. They've got Erika-chan and Hiro-chan. Uh, some more guys are sort of like, like blushing. Can I get a picture after this, please? It was worth coming here just to see the two of them. Uh, and... Nagi is like off in the corner thinking, no, that's not it. That's not the only reason why, why our class's cafe has been a huge success. And we see Namie is running the cafe, <laughs> which like, given they were initially told not to come, it's a huge step from don't come to work at the cafe. Uh, Namie, not in the main outfit, just like in her, in her like, um, um, chef's, or not like a chef's attire, but the outfit she would wear at Uminote. All right, party of four, right this way, please. And the next group of two, please take those empty seats over there. Uh, and the rest of the class, like, is, like, crying to Namie. Thank you so much. We would have never been able to manage without you. Leave it to us. It's just another day at the office. So I guess even on, like, their first day off in a decade, Namie is still working. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be um, uh, Yohei over here. you got to use your wrist like this while you rotate the pan. And voila! And he pulls out, I guess, an, an omelet. Uh, and the rest of the class is, like, blushing. What a genius! If only we could serve this in the shop. Uh, can you blend... And there's a, like, sign above. Can you blend it like Yohei? Uh, and 
Yohei comments, well, cultural festivals these days are pretty strict about their rules, huh? I'm not sure what, what about this omelet is not allowed at the shop, but okay. So that's how you make the perfect runny omelet. Would you mind teaching us too? Uh, and there's just like, uh, like gossip that Nagi's hearing. Those parents that they run a diner together, they're totally pros. Whose parents are they anyway? And Nagi thinks, to think my parents would join the fray. And then someone calls out, Nagi! And Nagi turns back, Wah! and Sachi like runs smack into him. Sachi? And, um, okay, oh, okay, I saw the next panel, and I think I know what's going on here. She asks, help me, big brother, huh? And we see there's this, like, crowd of guys chasing her. Big brother, for real? She's, like, using Nagi to try to scare them away. Are they trying to hit on Sachi? Um, oh, oh, what the fuck is, okay. So apparently there's some class at this school... That's having a rent-a-sister program? Where's the rent-a-sister? Find that class now, boys. I guess the kids are like the rent-a-girlfriend thing that there's an anime about that I never got around to watching. Um, where like some, you pay someone to act like a little sister. It's just, that's just, that's fucking weird. That's fucking weird. Uh, and Nagi just thinks, is that what they think this is? Hmm. And Nagi sighs. We're crying out loud, Sachi. If you're going to come, you should tell me first. And Sachi stops him. Forget about that. You're studying in a corner on your own during the cultural festival. That's loner to the max. Legit embarrassing. And Nagi's really hit by that. Sh shut up already. All right. Ash, sh shut up, all right? I'm begging you. And Nagi, like, turns to her. Anyways, I got the immense duty of the M1, you know? I'm just taking this brief moment take a little break. Uh, and... And Sachi pulls out this, like, coupon book. So you won't be needing these coupons, will you? Uh, when did you... I think she, like, stole that from Nagi. I mean, you are going to be using them anyway, right? See ya! And we see uh, Sachi's friends with her. Is that your brother, Sachi? He sure doesn't look it. Uh, and Nagi just is sort of frustrated at that and thinks, if that's how it is, then I'd rather just skip straight to the after party and start the M1 now. And then someone else calls out, Nagi-kun... And it's Erika, who's out of her maid outfit, back in her normal clothes. Sorry to keep you waiting. I finally finished up my work as a maid. And Nagi's just, uh, what? Don't what me. Let's go around the school together. That's... There is no way you can't... I mean, with anyone except Nagi, there would be no way you could play... You couldn't... There was no way you could play that off as anything but a date. With Nagi, he might be dense enough for that to work. And Nagi's just stunned. What? And Erika sort of like gets, gets a little, little frustrated... Since the M1 is coming up soon, we need to be promoting ourselves right now. Do we really have to go that far? Uh, but with that, they, they go out and are out and about, uh, and Erica at some point calls out, Nagi-kun, I want some of those chocolate bananas. Uh, and we see there's like a chocolate, bananas dipped in chocolate, which is the thing, I guess, with like Shoba, Shoba stickers attached to them. Um, but, but Nagi just comments, Sachi took my coupons. Ah, uh, well, there's no helping that. Uh, and then we see, we're at Class 2C, who don't know about Nagi and Erika's situation, which is weird because the whole thing with, with Asuma, Asuma uh, with, with Shion, implied that there was some knowledge there. You know, Shion was like, oh yeah, I, I know y'all are, are together. I know you're engaged. I guess maybe it's just a Shion thing because they're kind of friends. But anyway, the one running the stand, why are Umino Kun and Erika Chan together? Are they close to begin with? Uh, and Erica tells them, ah, we're going to be in the M1 together. I lost at Rock Paper Scissors, so I had to. Which is like, that's a flimsy-ass excuse. Let's be honest here. You know, like, I don't know. Something about something about the way the M1 is structured. I don't buy that, like, anyone would really believe Rock Paper Scissors led to you having to be in it. Uh, or having to be Nagi's partner. It's a little weird thing. I don't know. But er Nagi just thinks she had to. Uh, and Erica, or no, the 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 uh, stand uh, runner, the the store shop, whatever the term is, the person running the shop. Will you be all right? How about you perform with me instead? Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, and Erica is a little, a little awkward. We we're hoping for your support. Uh, and Nagi, who's like stuck the chocolate banana in his mouth. Um, see, this is what we get for that for, yeah, for promoting ourselves and stuff. That's exactly why we need to do this. 
And Nagi like adds on, what if they start worrying about you? And we see Nagi's just like chewing on that chocolate banana. I think it's meant to be a dick joke. Um, but I don't know. Actually, Nagi-kun, don't you think the way you're eating that is a little weird? Because it does sort of look like a dick joke. I don't know. Uh, but Nagi just tells her, my hands are full. What about yourself? You've got something around your lips. And you see there's a little bit of, of like chocolate on her lips. Huh? No way. Where? And Nagi points it out. And you see all the guys are sort of like getting jealous at Nagi for how he's like sort of acting around Erika. And Erika asks, come to think of it, this is a first time. Huh? We've never hung out together at school before. Right? Because they're constantly like hiding their, their relationship. Though actually it's not like entirely true. They still like, they're normally like hanging out away from the crowd, which I, I guess is what Erika means there. But they do hang out at school, you know? Like, the Icarus gang has seen them from time to time. Uh, back at the start of the M1 arc, they were hanging out. Uh, but Nagi tells her, well, not that I think anybody would even begin to think that we were living together as fiancés. It's just for the best that we aren't seen together. But Erica tells him, today's fine. I mean, now we've got a reason to be together. And, like, you can tell she's getting more and more comfortable with her own feelings towards him. Um... So that sort of is, is like, the M1 feels a little bit like an excuse here. And Nagi's just, I guess, how innocent. Uh, and then they come to a haunted house that Class 1E is putting on. And they go through it. And Nagi is just, like, stunned, like, panicking by everything. It's like, we're, like, we're like in montage mode, I think. Because Erika's just, like, stone-faced. We cut to this, like, uh, ring toss game that Erika wins. All right, I got the prize. And the, the girl running the store hands Nagi this giant teddy bear. Here's your prize. Seriously? Uh, and Erika calls out to Nagi. Nagi-kun, let's go there next. Hold on, Amino-san. Um, they got some, some like yakisoba, I think. I'm not, not familiar enough with Japanese cuisine. Want some, Nagi-kun? Huh? No, I'm fine. It's not every day you get to eat like this. Eat. I said I'm fine. And we see like the school like noticing them. A little like concerned. Like, I think they're at one point, at one part confused. Um... And, like, seeing the two of them together. And also, like, a little... There's that, like, like cartoon sweat drop on their brows. Or, like, behind them where... If we were facing them, it would be on their brows. Mm. Like, they're a little concerned about this. And then we cut to... A weird school play. Uh, somewhat Romeo and Juliet. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? And... Revealing their lack of knowledge of, like, how Shakespearean language works, Romeo responds, right here, Romeo in the house. Which is, like, ignoring, ignoring like, the, the clash of, of dialects there. Wherefore means why. She asks, why are you Romeo? Not to get on my, my, my theater major Shakespeare cap, but the point of the fucking wherefore art thou Romeo speech is that she wishes that he was anyone but a Montague because then they could be together and not have this family feud. It's not about where he is. It's why is he who he is. But anyway, back to the chapter. Um, somehow, that ridiculously bad <laughs> version of Romeo and Juliet causes uh, Erica to, like, tear up. And Nagi, I love Nagi's face. It's just like, what the fuck? You've got to be kidding me. And even everyone else around them is like, Concern for Erica. This guy behind her is like laughing. Um, and then after the show, did you see the audience? Why was Erica chan with Umino kun? They were at the haunted house and food stalls too. So like now everyone is really starting to like see them together. Um, I'm not sure their whole we barely know each other thing is like going to hold up after this. And someone comes to them. Well, you see, and it's Hero with like a flashlight in their eyes. The two of them, not flashlight, spotlight. The two of them are partnering up for the M1. Hiro-chan, uh, and the guy of this pair is just, ah, is that all? So that's what it is. Aren't you being a little too jealous of, oh, no, this is the, the girl, I think. Aren't you being a little too jealous of Umino-kun? And her partner responds, I want to see the cultural festival with Erika-chan like that. Um, and then someone responds, oh, this is a, um, s someone says this to, to Hira, one, one of the two. Actually, if Erika-chan and Hiro-chan teamed up, wouldn't we totally win? I know. If anything, I wanted to see that, right? But, like, they weren't the ones who were picked out for the event. They were the partners. Is that how this thing works? Uh, but Hiro just tells them, well, that just wouldn't be interesting, would it? Uh, and then later on, uh, we see Erika holding up a cu cup of coffee. Pwah! Now I'm satisfied. 
I know I said we were promoting ourselves, but school events like these aren't so bad every once in a while, and we didn't even have to study for it. Uh, Nagi's like, sort of, sort of takes, like, has a sigh and then turns to Erika. I know this is what you said, but you really just wanted to see the cultural festival, didn't you? And you asked me to tag along because you didn't want to be alone. And Erika reacts, what? Well, I guess that might be part of it, but I just figured you'd be all alone, so I thought I might as well invite you. Might as well? You were having so much fun, you forgot all about promoting ourselves. Speak for yourself. So, like, it does really feel like... I'm trying to find the right... Yeah, I'm trying to find the right way to phrase this. It feels like Erika... There's a good bit of denial here. Like, she's, like, denying that this is all a part of, like... Like, she wants to be... But she wants to spend time with Nagi here. She has the whole thing, you know, it's, it's like, I might as well invite you, and it's to promote ourselves. But, like, given what this chapter title is, I initially thought that we be part of their M1 act, because I was hoping this chapter would actually give us the M1 act. But I'm, it's looking like that's going to be wrong. I'm going to guess that title is going to end up being about... Erica's going to say that to... Ah, Erica's going to say that to Nagi about this event. About, you know, I'm glad we got to be out in the open like this. It'll be a sweet moment. Um, but anyway, Nagi then says, well, thanks to you. I think I can face the after party without being on edge now. And Eric is taken aback by that and puts her cup down. Me too. I'm glad I got to hang out with you at school. There it is, like I said. Uh, and it is, it is a pretty sweet moment. Like When I saw that title, I was like... Is that going to be some kind of, like, their event for the M1 is going to be some sort of goodbye or something? Um, but no, it, it's a much more sweet, much more just happy to have this moment together. Not bittersweet, just, like, pure sweet. Um, and Erica's just, or Nagi's like, what are you even saying? And Erica, in a very weak attempt to deflect, is just, what about you? Huh? I said, what about you? And Nagi's, like, just kind of confused. By that little turn, Omnosan, you're hiding something from me, aren't you? And Erica's clearly caught by that. She's she's been found out, uh, but she denies. Not not really. And then she like instantly changes tack. Even if I told you, there's nothing you can do about it. So that's why I haven't told you. Uh, but Nagi's just then tell me, huh? You want me to say it right now, right before the M1? And Nagi just like looks at her. Um, I think what she's hiding is that, like, she, she's going to admit she's into Nagi, maybe? Or she's hiding the fact that she's actually happy to spend time with him? The truth is, and then Nagi just cuts, him off, cuts her off, I don't want to hear it. What? Don't go saying things that are bad luck, okay? Then don't ask! Uh, what is the thing that she said that's bad luck? The, like, it feels like... The bad luck, the closest thing I can get to this scene and bad luck is like the whole once this is over, I'll tell you something trope that always means that character is going to die. Um, but it's not really what's happening here. I don't know. It's a weird little exchange here. Uh, but Nagi tells her, you don't have to worry. We'll win this for sure. And Eric is sort of taking it back for a minute. And then she gets a little, little, a little hot and bothered there uh, and turns away. She was sort of into that, you can tell. If, if you knew, then you should have said something earlier. Now I feel dumb for being the only one under all this pressure. Uh, and, oh, I think what, what, what he's assuming she was going to say was like, I don't know if we'll win this. I don't know if whatever crazy plan we have will work. And I think Eric is taking that and running. Because, like, there's the, we'll win this for sure, and that leads to Erica's if you knew... Which, either she actually was, like, what she was going to say was she's nervous about this. Which, honestly, now that I think about it, that's the most likely option. I think what she was going to say is she's nervous about winning. Um, and that's, that's the, the context for this line. If, if you knew, the, then you should have said something earlier. Now I feel dumb for being the only one under all this pressure. And Nagi kind of nods. Um, or no, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, because Nagi goes on, I really don't think there'd be a point in telling me. No matter what it is, we're going to win for sure, so you don't have to say it. So, like, it feels like that wasn't meant, like, Nagi's statement wasn't meant to be an answer to what Erica's leaving unsaid. 
I don't know, there's something off about this. I'm not sure if it's like the writing or the translation or something, but there's just something slightly off about this. Everything, there, it's happened before, I think, with, with the scanlation, that like sometimes the characters just feel slightly disjointed. Like they're not quite having the same conversation. And that feels like a translation problem. Though I admit, I don't know enough about translation to really say one way or the other. But I don't know, there's something, something slightly off here. Anyway, Erika says, you know, Nagi-kun, you don't look like the type, but you're actually pretty good with pressure, huh? And she just, like, smiles at him. For the first time, I thought you were cool. And that, like, like, takes Nagi out, huh? And we get, get on the intercom. The after party will be starting soon. M1 participants, please report to the gymnasium immediately. All that's left is for them to win. Next time, the center color page right before the anime broadcast... So we're not off next week? Okay. Um, I'm just really confused as to what's going on with this magazine. Because I saw that like on the little editor blurb that we don't get with the official release of, of To Your Eternity mentioned that there was no magazine this week. And this and Cuckoo and Eden Zero are all in the same magazine. Or Eternity and Cuckoo and Eden Zero are all in the same magazine. Um, and so... Why, like, like, given the way this little editor blurb there, right, at the end says, uh, right before the anime broadcast, which would be in about a week, would be when uh, the anime set to come out is the 23rd. So, like, there's just something kind of weird about that. I don't know. I guess we are still having a chapter next week and of Eden Zero. I thought we were going to be off of both next week, but I guess not. Um... Anyway, let's ignore that. Let's talk about the chapter. Um, I will say, I was sort of hoping... Like, we, we ended this chapter at basically where I thought this chapter would start. I thought this chapter would be the M1, and it's very much not. It's a little Nagi Airy date. Uh, and there's a lot of good... good like, there's some good stuff here. Uh, some parts I was not as big on. I think the, the weird chocolate banana dick joke was a choice. Uh, not necessarily a good one. Um, but, like, there is still some, like, and, like, the Rent-A-Sister bit was not good. I did not like that at all. That was just kind of creepy and, and weird in the way this show often is with the concept of sisters. Which, God, it's, there's so much, like, like I would love this show. And you occasionally get shit like, sit, like, the Rent-A-Sister and Sachi's whole deal. And you're just like, I don't know. I don't know about that. I just don't know about any of that. Uh, but anyway, there is some some good stuff here. Uh, the date has some some fun moments. Uh, just like getting to see them, you know, they, they have an excuse now. So they don't have to hide the fact that they're like, at the very least, friends and close friends at that. They can just like be open with themselves in a way they rarely can at school. And that's nice. Uh, I do, as much as the, the last conversation is kind of hard to read... Uh, just in like a, a what exactly anyone is talking about sort of way. It still is like it's it's there's a there's many a cute moment there. Um, Erica's I'm glad I got to hang out with you. Just like open and and guard down sort of honesty, which is always fun to see from her. Um, and Erica's little for the first time I thought you were cool is really cute. That causes Nagi to like become a blushing mess. But really, this chapter sort of feels... It's a little wheel spinny. It's a little... We're here for the M1. Let's get on with the M1 at some point. So, not a bad chapter by any means, but, like, let's let's get the show on the road. So, with that said, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe. Or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!